Well, hello collectors. Here we are again. Uh, we're on our episode number 97. Is that right, Ob? Yeah, that's it. Number 97, and uh, today's the uh, 22nd of uh, October. Uh, fall is moving along here. Pretty soon we'll be into Thanksgiving and then Christmas, and you know, but uh, not much we can do about it. Uh, I'm happy to report that my eye is better now and it looks like I'm going to be okay so I'm I'm thankful for that because I spent I don't know two or three weeks here not not enjoying myself much with that problem but uh, I think the worst is over and we're uh, back again so I can uh, I can partially see something now anyhow so before we get started uh, I have a couple of uh, couple of shout outs and uh, I like to hmm I like to do those for people and and I think since it's uh holy cow Ob, it's almost one o'clock and we Ooh. haven't had a pop yet <laughs> something going on here we found our uh, our ice thing here which we don't use as a nice thing it's a stirrer now but so that's good it was uh, it wound up uh, in with one of the boxes that uh, some stuff came in that I was showing you in two episodes ago but at least we retrieved it so there we go okay Bob you looking for a drink sure sure I think I'll have a little spot myself a little taste get going here a little bit Sunday mornings are always kind of hard to to get things cracking but uh, here we are and there's that stir all right we'll go a little for Ob all right I'll get us going a little for me that should be enough for Sunday morning Put a little, little of this mix in here. Got to have a little, just a little bit of that, not too much. Just a little hit. And that should be good, Ob. Yeah. We'll stir it up here. I washed this stirrer, by the way, guys. So, uh, what are we drinking today? Well, I was at the liquor store this mm. morning at 10 o'clock when they opened, and Sure enough, they had restocked, so I, I bought uh, one and a half gallons of Imperial, three bottles. Oh, great. So that'll <laughs> last us for next week, anyhow, I hope. Well, this is for today, probably, yeah. Yeah, so I told them they got to stop running out of my favorite uh, booze. So here you go, collectors. Here's to you. Hey, our Rob. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. Mmm. Yep, that, that's what I needed. So I guess we'll we'll do a couple of shout outs here and then we'll get on with the uh, with the unboxing. Mm-hmm. The first uh, one I wanna address this is from a a nice uh, a British lady, Adele Stanton. And uh, she's from Manchester, England. Um, and she telling me really, uh, she didn't ask for a shout out, but I think it's a worthy thing. Um, her um, her partner Ben uh, has the uh, the big C, and they've been going through hell and uh, surgery still to come and. Uh, and she says that Ben and I watch you literally every single day on DTC on YouTube and it's become a great comfort to both of us, especially Ben as he keeps, it keeps him seriously distracted from his problem. And for this I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Well, Adele, I'm glad that uh, this nonsense we do uh, uh, helps you guys out. Uh, and we surely wish you the best. Um, medical treatment's pretty good today, and England's one of the best too. So let's uh, 
I'm sure everything's going to be good, Adele. So thank you for writing. And then I want to give uh, another shout out. Uh, this is from a, another British man, uh, Gary Ashbridge. And uh, he says he's been watching my YouTubes for a long time and uh, likes the hobby. Uh, he started collecting when he was 14. So he's been collecting 39 years now. Uh, he said, tells me a little story here. He says, when I, I emptied out my bank account of all its money to buy my first SA dagger when I was 16, and my mother went mad saying that I had thrown my money away. Well, it was the best thing I could have done. So there you go, collectors. Uh, I'm sure all of us, uh, when we got into this hobby, have heard that, that uh, you're just wasting your money with this stuff. Nobody wants anything like that. It's just throwing your money away. But um, Gary, the main reason for his writing, he wanted me to to give his best friend John Plum uh, a shout out. Uh, he's um, unfortunately having uh, mobility issues and, and he has uh, multiple sclerosis. So he's in a wheelchair and um, Gary helps uh, John uh, to go to the shows and so forth. So uh, we, really, uh, we really wish him well. He says, we enact yourself when we open the parcels with our Bob Burns cutter, not an original, and get very cross when it's packed with popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's yes, we know funny. the feeling. Yeah, we know the feeling. So, okay to you guys. Gary, thanks for letting us know about John Plum, and uh, let's, let's hope for the best there, and uh, keep collecting. You're right. Well, it was the best thing I could have done. Write that down because um, it's uh, it's certainly the truth. So good luck to you guys. Well, we uh, Rob and I have been pretty busy and uh, uh, been to a number of places and a show and stuff and things have come in and uh, I'll kind of show you, I guess what um, uh, what came in this week. Uh, that just walked in with people uh, and the things we bought at a show and um, uh, from a from a nice uh, a nice lady Judy in North Jersey also um, and then we'll get to opening the parcels mm. Wow I've had too many of them I'll never get to anything what about the bad news about our friend Walter Dudgeon yeah I, that's right I want to mention that too uh, uh, it seems like I have to do this too many times, but uh, uh, another real, real good asset and uh, wonderful dealer, wonderful person has um, passed uh, Walter Dungeon. I don't know how many of you people knew Walter, but uh, he was a, uh, uh, a steady uh, show seller. I've written many, many, many a check to him for wonderful things and... Uh, uh, anything I ever bought from him was uh, terrific, uh, and he was a true gentleman. So, um, uh, R.I.P. Walter, and we'll all surely miss you. Really sorry. Okay. Oh, too sad, these things. Mm. All the time anymore. Well, okay. Let's see, Ob, I guess we'll, um, we'll do the things that we, that we just sort of came in. Before we do that, uh, uh, we, we had to clean out a, a portion of the cellar because our gas company uh, wanted to change the meter for some reason or another. I hope the new meter we got is uh, not working good and the bills are a little uh, lower than the last meter, but that forced us to, to clean out an area uh, which took us two days, I think, to clean out. And, and we found a lot of stuff there, too, that we didn't even know we had. And uh, just one of the things that uh, I thought might be of interest, um, 
I don't know where I got this. I don't know how long I've had it. Um, but it's kind of a nice um, uh, cutlass. It's a British naval piece, I believe. It's got the British naval uh, insignia on the uh, uh, the langette with the British lion head and uh, and a typical British um, naval knot. Um, nice scabbard leather. And then when you take it out, it's neat how the uh, uh, these cutlasses have the, an outside spring on them here that goes up through the cross guard and uh, so you technically have to push that in when you take it out to free it from the scabbard. And then the blade is, uh, is very, very nice. It's an all etched blade um, in beautiful condition. Um, this is the uh, British crown over, over an anchor and uh, the maker uh, has a type of a, like a Star of David um, insignia, which I've seen before on um, British swords. I don't know their name, uh, but they're a good maker. And then the other side is uh, also etched. Uh, it's, in, uh, it's in pretty nice condition. But since it's been laying under something for 30 years now, we figured, well, I guess we really don't have to have it. So if somebody out there likes it, whatever it's here so that's that's one thing and then I bought a lot of things from a nice lady Judy in Verona New Jersey and one of the things that Ab and I have don't have a clue <laughs> what it is uh, it's multi-colored very interesting looking um, we don't know whether it's a tourist piece or or what it is, uh, but it does have a uh, kind of an odd looking blade on it. Uh, kind of looks like something from the Far East to me, but I don't know. What do you think it is, Abby? You have any idea? I don't know, maybe something Indonesian, something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. I don't I know, guess. we haven't even had a chance to look yeah, at Yeah, so it, we don't so. know what this is, but... Uh, it's cool looking. Yeah. It's, well made. It, it's well made, yeah. I, it just, it looks better made than what a tourist thing would be, but... Uh, Somebody maybe one out of there you guys know. out there yeah. knows what it is. Oh yeah, wait a minute, that's... Uh, oh yeah, yeah, we see that all the time. Yeah, how can you guys not know what this is? You're dealing with this all your lives. Well, uh, another one of those, yeah. We certainly don't know everything. And then I'll show you some of the things we, uh, we just bought at a little show yesterday. No, uh... No great shakes here. This is all, all common uh, entry level stuff, but um, we'll just run it by you anyhow. Um, for you guys that are just getting into the hobby, these are. We got a bad batch on those Denobles. I think it's going out every two seconds. Yeah, I know. I don't know what it is. Maybe they're wet or something. Maybe I spilled some of that booze on them, but. Well, we'll start out here. We got a nice uh, uh, an Alcozo Army. No great shakes, like I say. It's just a standard uh, standard piece with the original porter piece. See how frayed there. I've never been untied. That cross guard, you know. Yeah, cross guard and a flared out pommel. So get with Alcozo. Nice scabbard and a nice blade on it. It's got the earlier uh, Alcozo mark. But like I say, it's a, it's an entry level piece, and priced accordingly. Oh, so it's not a bad thing for for starting out. Better. Got Denobles all over the place here, and here's another army that's um, that's really in um, nice condition. Um, I think it's got a generic. Um, Cross guard hilt, nice orange grip, beautiful scabbard, perfect, perfect condition, and the porta pee is still just about mint. Again, just see where it rubbed against the cross guard. So it's never been off the dagger. Just a tiny bit there, and the blade is uh, is really nice. Um, uh, it looks like it's a nickel plated blade yeah, too. Yeah. yeah, it's really a really a a fine fine uh, blade. Um, 
it's unmarked though, but still, it's a very, very nice piece. And the scabbard is terrific too. Oh, just it's got 100% of the silvering on it. What do you it. think the maker is? Can't tell because it's generic. Yeah. Could be anybody. Yeah. But uh, that's a that's a very very fine uh, it's a good shape, dagger. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's it's yeah. not bad at all. Uh, this is just a uh, a second model Luft uh, white grip, probably made for a, a flyer, 1940 or so. Uh, but in overall, it's uh, it's in nice um, nice condition. The, the scabbard is good, grip is good. And it has a really, really nice, uh, nice blade on it. Also, that's just about mint. And uh, this one was made by um, WMW. Uh, we don't see them too often there. So that's a real, and all the all the cross grains on it, and all that's a that's not a bad, uh, bad piece. And uh, and another second luft. Uh, this has a, uh, a pretty nice uh, deep orange grip and again a, a porta pee on it. Uh, the grip looks pretty nice all throughout. I don't see any problems and uh, nice scabbard and so forth. Uh, the blade is it's still bright. It's got a couple of little couple of little minor age marks on it, but it's not bad. Uh, and this one was produced by uh, SMF with that Waffen amp and so forth. Uh, it's a nice um, a nice dagger. It's not bad at all. Again, only entry level stuff here, but, uh, but a good way to get started. And another fighting knife. Um, got the wood grips and the, uh, the leather is still good with the, uh, with the snap. Scabbard is in decent condition. It's not bad at all. And this one was uh, apparently apparently well used. It, uh, the blade has got some age to it and some usage. A little bit of sharpening on it. And I think it's one of these D-Mag jobs. Yeah. They made a lot of these in the First World War. D-Mag. Yeah. D-E-M-A-G. So this goes back to World War One. this fighting knife. But it's not in bad shape, and mm -hmm. hey, just think of the action this thing must have seen. Mm -hmm. Boy, oh boy. So those are those things, and uh, uh, then there was one uh, really nice... Boy, that the Nobly's a mess. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, this is a very, very nice um, SA that... I bought it at the show. It um, has its original early hanger. Uh, the scabbard has all of the anodizing on it, and the grip is uh, really, really nice. You guys might recognize this as a pack right off the bat. There's some ways you can tell that the it's got the shorter upper scabbard fitting here. That's usually pack, and the way the cross guards are shaped and these kind of grips you see a lot on pack daggers. And it's nice on the other side too. But it's nice to see full anodizing and the original hanger and so forth. And then the blade is really nice too. A uh, real good, real good blade. Uh, nice uh, motto and so forth. And uh, what's interesting on the, uh, on the piece, uh, this is a ground room. And uh, when they ground it, uh, they took all the inscription off and redid the whole blade. Uh, you'd never even know that it was a ground room, except that there's only just a little bit of the E, P, and S uh, insignia left. But at least there's something, so that that counts for a lot. So that's a that's a very very nice um, uh, ground room piece. So that's good, and. Uh, and I got some assorted hangers that are I bought will be selling these all separately. People that are interested in in some good straps. Uh, got two armies and a Luftwaffe. Why does that Luftwaffe buckle so high up? 
So high up, meaning what? This side. Oh, you know, that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, um, uh, the original wearer must have, uh, must have adjusted it to do that. Yeah, I can see where that's been. Uh, yeah, he, this has been uh, raised up by the original wearer. See how that's period done there, and this is kind of cranky here where it was. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of an interesting thing, and it's nice they got the uh, they got the leather. Um, I guess tabs. when you're wearing it, it's more of a design thing. It's more, yeah, you know, it's a yeah. diagonal instead of being. Yeah, a, see, he's got head. he's wearing the dagger's going to wind sure. up straight instead of uh, on an angle. He just likes the way it looks when it hangs with the buckles like that. I think that's exactly right, Ob, because normally the uh, the one strap is going to be longer than the other uh, on these kind of hangers. And then there's a nice set of armies here with deluxe fittings and tabs. And uh, they were these were made later. They got that later canvas type back, uh, but they're still nice. Nothing wrong with them. And this set here is nice too with deluxe fittings, good brocade, and uh, the reverse is uh, the velvet, shows only modest wear. So that's, uh, yeah, we were uh, still scratching our head about that um, set of Luftwaffe straps, and Ob said, let's put it on a dagger and see what it looks like. So we did, um, and as you can see, now the dagger is, ha is hanging straight across yeah. instead of tipped, but by moving the buckle up, it sort of gives the eye illusion that yeah, it's that's the right. other way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they, I'll bet this strap maybe got broken and it was repaired. I and think this he thing. needed a repair and he couldn't find a short one. Mm. And uh, that's what he did. Because look how it hangs. You don't see him hanging hard. No, no, like they're that. supposed to hang yeah. like this. Sure. You know. So that's that. <laughs> so there you go. There's a little anomaly that um, something we normally don't see, but these are the kind of things that happen. You know, after all, uh, uh, these daggers may have been worn for three, four, five years, and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of things can happen during that time. So I thought that's kind of interesting. Um, next, we'll. Uh, I guess we can show a, a few. Odds and ends that we that we bought, uh, just clearing out a a collection kind of thing. Well, we still got this left. What are we going to do with this? Well, okay, we'll we'll buy it. You know, we don't even know what half this stuff is sometimes, but but uh, here we are. We'll show you some of these odds and ends that we that we bought. Uh, and this is <laughs> this is a. Um, uh, uh, what do you call it, Ob? It's a trench art piece. That's a shell there, and they used it as a, uh, a hilt. Yeah, a yeah. See the shell, and they use it. This is what kind of art do we call this? Trench art. Trench art. Yeah, and with a blade on it. Uh, and that blade's no joke. No, the blade sharp as a razor. That's kind of kind of interesting. Uh, I see if there's any markings on it. No, but it's just a shell. This, uh, I'm not sure what the heck this is, Ob, but... Uh, okay, what does it say on it? Let's see what it says. The box is nice. Yeah, it's very well made. It says, World War II Japanese gunner uh, clinometer. Not chronometer, clinometer. I don't know what that could be, but uh, maybe some of you guys would know what that is. Uh, a lot of you guys are interested in instruments and optics and... Yeah. Stuff like that. Doesn't look Japanese to me. Well, I don't know. That's what it says. That doesn't mean what it says is correct, though. And then this thing was in there. Ob and I, we don't know what the heck this is. It, it says England awake. Oh, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's garbage. That it's garbage, there. yeah. yeah Not even going to show it. Okay. Here's another, just some kind of crazy... Fighting knife or something, uh, uh, not real expensively made, but it uh, it did the job. All right, and, uh, and a box of uh, crazy things, I think. Well, I don't, you know, I don't know if that English pin's 
superior, I doubt it. I just I think it's, yeah. Oh yeah, this thing, I love this. Yeah, that's cool. Look at this, collectors. Uh, obviously it's a, a copy of a Luger, but look what it is. It's a buckle. <laughs> Isn't that cool? You could actually wear that for a Luger collector going to a yeah, show. I think a lot of guys would I like mean, that. that's got to be fantastic. I like that. Hey, you never know what you're going to get with odds and ends that people have. Uh, uh, here's a, uh, a very, very nice, really, really well-built little cannon. It's old, too. It's very old. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to look for, for any make and marks or anything on them. So. No. But they're cool. Brass. Oh, there was other stuff in here, too. Yeah, there's some American insignia in there. And yeah, different stuff. Uh, uh, I think there's a cool hunting badge in there. Yeah, that's a cool hunting badge. I like that. Oops, off my little belt, little belt loop over. So, just some, you never know what, uh, you know, it's kind of stuff that... What's that ring in there, Pop? It's a ring? Yeah, there's a ring in there. What is that? Let's see. Uh... Oh, yeah, I remember looking at this. Uh, uh, this ring is uh, dated... I think 1948 or something, oh. and it's from um, uh, Swine, Swinefurt, you know, where they had the big bomb-making factory. Uh, whoever wore it had a big, big yeah. finger. So this would have been worn after the war. Uh, you don't think it's silver, do you? It is silver. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's marked 835 sterling. Oh, okay. So that's just some stuff, and uh, um, there's a couple more things in here. Uh, Here's another terrific old cannon. Look at that, the breech opens up in the back. <laughs> very, very well made and uh, boy, for some of the Calexis kind of stuff, I'll bet these are, these are terrific. Uh, and then finally, uh, another cannon, only a bigger one. <laughs> I think that box is that big. <laughs> yeah. Look at that baby, guys. All brass, I guess. Very, very nice. It lifts up and down, and yeah. So there you go. You never know. Uh, never know what you're going to come across sometimes. And uh, when you're buying a collection, you get all the way down to the to the end of things, and oh, we still have this stuff left. Yeah. Do you want this stuff? Well, I, geez, I don't know. I don't even know what. Oh, I'll well, take it. And okay, we'll pay you for it. What are you going to buy? I don't know. What do you? Okay, and okay, guys. Ob needs another drink. Of course, I do. I do too, but I don't want to say that. But there we go. Yep. I don't need another drink. I just like to have another drink. <laughs> Let's have another drink. Yeah, you're right. Sounds less desperate, right. doesn't it? But hurry up with that thing, will you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, hurry up with that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, well, next guys. Uh, we bought some, bought some helmets, and uh, uh, we're kind of a mess. We don't even know what half of them are either, but we thought we'd show them to you. Uh, you know, it's, uh, helmets aren't really our thing, but we do like them, and I know a lot of you guys like them too. So I'll show you what we got. We got quite a few of them. And I know we do get emails that guys say, oh, show some more helmets, so here we go. All right, this, um, this first one is, uh, it's got kind of a camo cover on it. Uh, uh, we think it's Italian, Ob? I think it's Italian. Italian yeah. camo helmet, possibly fire, I don't know. We yeah. just got it. It looks like there was something yeah. insignia on the front that's right. not there anymore, and the liner is still uh, good in it. Yep, so that's something to look into. That's to be looked into, and then we got... But just for it to have camo on it, that's amazing. Yeah, it's uh, sort of strange. Um, let's see how the best way to get to this. Uh, I think we showed this to you before, guys. I don't know, but uh, but this is a terrific piece. It's, um, it's a... Um, 
obviously a uh, uh, an M35 looking helmet. It looks uh, like it's missing something. It's yeah. <laughs> the other side. <laughs> so it, it's got brackets on here. Obviously, it was made to dis display in a place that uh, that sold helmets. So I think it's a pretty yeah, interesting it's pretty, that's thing. A, that's an odd piece. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Maybe somebody did that, but I'll tell you, that'd be pretty... Uh, that's a great thing for a yeah. display in a helmet collection, though. Sure. So that's yeah. what I got to have that. Really good. Uh, yeah. uh, let's see what we got next here. Well, it looks like we got a, um, a double decal police combat helmet. Uh, it's got a good finish. Uh, the decals look to be at least uh, oh, 85, 90 on that side. Um, and then on the other side, it's got the police insignia. That's about 90% at yeah. least. That's in good shape. How yeah. about the liner? And then the liner. Oh, you got the strap. Oh, there's liner's there. good. Chin straps with it. So, uh, so that's not a bad helmet at all. You see any numbers on there, Pop? Uh, Let's see. Looks like a 64 to me. I don't know. Well, I don't know. There's numbers on the back. Yeah, it's a Q64. You're right, Ob. Yep. Yeah. And there's a run number on it on the sure. back of it too. But everything you want. But that's a that's a good helmet. That's a, it shows shows some usage and all, but uh, it's in good condition. And let's see. Next, we got a. Let's see here. Well, this is a uh, uh, a Frankenstein type helmet that was converted uh, during the Nazi period. Uh, it's got quite a bit of wear to the um, uh, insignia, but it's not bad. Got those good air vents on it. Uh, the uh, the finish is not all that great, but it's still there. And uh, the liner is uh, is really good, um, and it also has the chin strap oh, too. Yeah, that's great. The liner's marked 56, so that's not a bad helmet at all. Giant, man. Giant thing, yeah. So I like that. And we got another one here. Uh, I'm not sure what we got here. I guess it's Italian. Yeah, it's yeah, another Italian. It's Italian. Great liner. Look at the liner in it. It's very, very good. And um, the finish is not bad on it either. It's got a few teardrops in the paint here, but that's the way it is sometimes. But that's not a bad helmet for you guys that are collecting Italian. Let's see what's next here. Oh, here we go, guys. An excellent uh, Luftschutz Gladiator type. You know, these are two-piece, these helmets, and the, uh, the decal is just about 100%. Yeah, decal is great. Yeah. And uh, a real good liner, too. And the chin strap. Uh, the the chin strap is broken off, yeah. yeah. Oh. But it's there. Look at that big 57 57, there. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That's the size, and there's the RLB numbers in there and so forth. So that's a good, um, a good gladiator piece. Let me just see the... Uh, Yeah, that's 100 percent. Yeah. And we'll put we'll put these bags back on again. And then uh, and then this one uh, uh, we're not we're not sure whether this is Vietnam period or or afterwards. We don't know. Definitely American. Uh, uh, definitely an American American helmet. Uh, good liner inside and chin strap and so forth. Okay, collectors, we got more helmets, but we'll take a break from helmets and show you something else. Uh, this just came in this week, which I was thrilled about. For you guys that collect uh, AH uh, tableware, uh, this is the optimum piece. Uh, this is the um, the teapot. 
Um, very, very beautiful. Uh, these came uh, with a coffee pot also and a, a large sugar, sugar container and a large creamer. And uh, uh, I'll give you the story in a minute, but uh, along with it, Oh, by the way, it's uh, of course it's marked uh, Wellner on the bottom, which they all would be. Uh, yeah, it's there. And as you can see, it's uh, it's never been cleaned. It was cleaned once, and all the uh, yeah, all the, the residue, the, the cleaning residue the is still there. Yeah, that's why that. That's why there's residue yeah. in here too. Yeah, it and, highlights it. Yeah. But they didn't clean the inside because it still stayed bright. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can still see it on the rim and everything. Yeah. And then along with the uh, with the That's like one of those guys that uh, waxes your car. They don't know what they're doing. They get it on your badge. Move the yeah. Cadillac. They can get wax yeah, inside yeah, there. Yeah, you're you're looking at that. Yeah. Covered with yeah. You're looking at that forever. Yeah. And along with this, uh, also totally uncleaned, uh, we have some great formal pattern flatware. That stuff's dirty too, I like it. Yeah, it's really dirty. So there's, uh, when we put this stuff up for sale, um, the purchaser has the option of either cleaning it, I mean this stuff will all come up bright mint, no question about it, because it's all in fine condition. It's all uh, 800 silver, of course. And, and there's uh, no real wear on it because no it's real wear. No, polished. it's just, yeah. just a patina. <laughs> roll of tape there going somewhere uh, and of course uh, all the pieces are marked on the back the same as just see if I get one yeah get one of them yeah there it is yeah that's good stuff yeah it's a nice walk-in huh yeah a nice nice man came in last um, I guess it was Thursday had a box says, what do you got and he pulls out this teapot I whew, my heart started beating and uh, then the, the flatware and uh, and we uh, we made a deal and uh, uh, I said well you know how do you come about this he said well my my wife's father had uh, uh, a whole set of it with the coffee pot and the sugar and the creamer and the tray and much more flatware he said there were four children involved that he divvied it up between the four children and, and his gal got this end of it. And I said, well, what happened to all the rest of it? He says, I don't know. Nobody seems to know what happened to it. So it's a shame, uh, but it's still great that at least this much of it survived. And maybe other stuff's in other collections where the other parties sold it over the years. I don't know. Mm. Ah, it's a good drink. But I was happy to get it, and I love it. I love it when you get stuff that's never even been touched since the war, and that's what this this all is. So great things here. Okay, guys, I'll go to something else. Okay, guys, we'll we'll press on and uh, and we'll see what came in in the boxes this week. Don't have a lot of them, but uh, who knows? You never know what's going to come in here. See where this one's coming from. Uh, ah, this is coming from um, Apple Valley, California. Oh, and it's coming from a man I know, Bill Lattice. Bill Lattice was a motorcycle cop in California for many years, and uh, he's retired now. He's an Arden collector and a very, very nice man. I don't get to see him much anymore because I don't get out to California too much, but uh, I don't know what we got here, but uh, we'll see. <coughs> see what we got here. <laughs> uh, Hello, Tom. This was taken at the 1993 Mac show when you had the Herman Goering's hunting dagger on display. Through your kindness, you let me handle it. I will never forget it. Let's see what that is. It's probably a picture here of Bill. Well, I was kind of hoping it was the dagger. 
Wow, yeah. There's Bill holding the fabulous yeah. jeweled million dollar Herman Gurry hunting dagger that we had at the Mac show way back when. Where do you think that baby's at? Uh, I hate to think where it's at. It's probably in Russia, but I don't know. Yeah. But see old Bill with his smile there. What a wonderful man he was. And he, and he says here then... What year was that? Well, this was taken at the 1993 Mac show when you had Herman Goering's hunting dagger on display. Through your kindness, you let me handle it. I will never forget it. We are sending you these from my hometown in Kentucky. Uh, they are for all of you to enjoy. Uh, give me a toast. Sometime when you have your Imperial. Okay. Ooh, let's have a toast. Here we go. <laughs> to Bill Lattice, one of the go, nicest Bill. men I've ever known in this hobby. Thanks for the pecans. <laughs> I hope I'm lucky for one of your prizes. <laughs> I hope oh, you I are, see, Bill. Yeah. I hope you are too, Bill. I see. Mm. Isn't that nice, guys? So we got some, uh, sure that's not some full skin penis. I guess Bill was originally from Kentucky. I didn't know that. Is that so. full of those snakes that blow up when you take the lid off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be it. Isn't that a nice picture? Yeah, that's good. We'll put it on the wall. Yeah, we'll put that on the wall. I look a bit heavier then. Yeah, a little younger too. Yeah, a little younger, yeah. Yeah. Still didn't have any hair though. <laughs> 23, that's, or 93, that's, uh, that's 30 years ago, my God. Is it 30 years? Yeah. Wow. Out of time flies. I remember that Garing Dagger, we had it on display, we had a special guard for it, and we had to take it and put it into the uh, hotel um, um, safe deposit box every night, and it was a big procedure, and uh, oh, Ooh, it was I don't really know if I would have done that, I just would have took it back to the room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I've heard, heard of hotel horror stories robbed. about yeah. those things. Yeah. yeah, I don't know where it is. <laughs> yeah, right. We hired this guy yeah. yesterday, and he didn't come in today. So, <laughs> well, that's really nice, Bill. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart, and we will enjoy that. Uh, so, at time. the show, was it uh, display only, or was it actually for sale? No, it was display. Okay. Now the dagger, the Goring dagger, was owned by uh, my good late friend Bob Waits, who had one of the best collections in the world back in the 90s. And uh, he said, "Sure, take the dagger, put it on display here. Here's a couple of Feldern hollows you can show <laughs> oh, with thanks. it too, which I did." And uh, he just uh, boy, he had some stuff, uh, huh? Boy, he was how nice. many birthday swords did he have? He had eleven. Of eleven them. SS eleven birthday swords. Eleven Himmler birthday swords. Uh, that today is. Yeah. Easily two or three million dollars oh, just in those birthday swords. Boy, what a collection he had. But anyhow, guys, let's see what we got next year. Something coming from East Pachoga, New York. All right. That sounds like an Indian name to me. I don't know how to pronounce it. Let's see how the Bob Burns cutter can handle this, which would be the best way to... Well, I don't know. It's a mystery here. I think it's a flap or something. Yeah. You're just missing it. Well, I think I'll just do it this way and... Yeah, that works. Yeah. Well, we got another letter here and... Uh, uh, the raffle's a great item. Okay. That goes down behind my bar. <laughs> Are there these more bribes that their ticket's going to get pulled? <laughs> This background sheet I had behind my bar, I thought you might want to use it. <laughs> he has a new background sheet on his bar, so he's giving me his old oh, okay. background sheet. All right, <laughs> here we go. All right, Ob, you needed a... Um, oh, good. Yeah. You need another some, coaster. Yeah, I lost my coaster, email. Yeah. Also. yeah, here's a man thinking about us with our awful habit here. Well, that's very nice. Uh, I don't know. It seems to me that these entries are trying to get to the top of the pile here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's sort of like maybe you could put a little tape on that one or something. Yeah. Or, uh, well, thank thank you very much. Um, this is from uh, Chris Anger. Thank you, Chris. The worst part is now if they do win, it's, oh, come on. Yeah, uh, yeah it's rigged. Yeah, it's rigged. 
<laughs> All you need to do is grease whip it up. <laughs> That's funny now, people are sending their entries in with gifts. With gifts, yeah. <laughs> well, I wish a lottery to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Well, that's okay, though. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's very yeah, nice. Very, nice. very that's cool. thoughtful. Thank I like you. that. I like that. We'll have to hang that up somehow. Yeah. Put it on the bottom out of the yeah, door, one of the doors. Here because we can't you know, spoil you, all those pictures. You know, we'll put it down there. We'll put it around a door or something. I don't know. We'll figure something out. Yeah, we'll figure out something. You can always use an extra drape. Let's see what we got here. Looks like something that originally came from Amazon or something, but uh, this is coming from Syracuse, New York. They got a great show there, Syracuse. Big gun show for years and years. Let's see what this is now. I hope this isn't another <laughs> gift where they put my entry Dear in. Here, Tom, here's a 12 yeah. pack of Denoblis. I hope my ticket flies at the top of the pile. No, I don't think so. It looks like a, a nice bag here. Let's see what's in this nice, nice black bag. Oh, we got a set of set of straps here, along with a dagger. We'll look at the straps first. Oh boy. Those are really, uh, really nice. Only straps with a look off a dagger. Yep, there you go. And let's see what... Uh, nice uh, one. Good condition. And a... Uh, it looks like a nice, uh, very nice Luftwaffe. I like the yellow handle. Yeah. Beautiful. Got those generic fittings. See those great big pebbles on the back? And that's a generic with a Luftwaffe. Let's see where. Oh, beautiful blade. Yeah, it's a um, it's a WKC piece. It's in very very nice condition. The blade is stone mint. I like this dagger. It's a quality quality piece. Yeah, very very nice. Um, and, I'm just assuming that they're separate. They're separate, yeah. Beautiful um, deluxe army straps. Yeah, the backs of them are show just about nowhere. Still, there's, there's a lot of silvering still on the uh, snap clips, and so that's a that's a pretty nice package. Okay, the man from Syracuse, I'll send you a check. I like that. That's very nice. Thank you. All right, there we go. Still moving along, guys. Uh, let's see what we got. It's next here. Uh, okay, maybe I'll try this. Looks like kind of a bigger box. You drink all right, Ob? Yeah, it's okay. My Denobly went out again, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Mm. I think I've used up a whole flint light in this thing. Let's just take up cigarettes. You light it once, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> well, here we have something from Drums, Pennsylvania. D-R-U-M-S. I don't, never heard of that town. Did you, all? No, Otto? never heard of that. Can't be that far from us. A lot of Maybe small it's towns. one of those little towns yeah, way up in the Pennsylvania mountains yeah. somewhere. We can look it up. Yep. Now uh, we'll see what we got here. There's a lot of towns in, in Pennsylvania, believe me. Yeah, oh yeah. If you, if you ever just uh, got off of the Pennsylvania Turnpike and just rode through a lot of those little towns, it's really fascinating. There's a lot of little towns everywhere in every state, you know. Yeah, I love those little towns full of Victorian houses and you wonder, you know, why did people move here to begin with and, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, I don't know. Let's see what we got here. Oh, 
something. Something made out of cloth, Bob. It looks like a big flag. Yeah, it looks like a giant one here. Let's see what he says in there. All right. Uh, a marker flag. I guess he means a vehicle flag. And and two or two armbands he got from an uncle uh, who was in the 101st Airborne. How about that? Oh, that's great. Yep. Well, it looks like we got a couple of really nice armbands. We'll take a look at them if you want. A lot of you guys like armbands. I do. Well, we sell a lot of armbands, don't we, Ob? Hopefully, yeah. I'm glad there's so many around because we, we need them all the time. Yeah, well, here we go. This is a this is a real nice uh, real nice example. That's a separate construction and for both the swaths and the field. Very nice and great shape. The colors are still nice, bright red. And this is really a weirdo. It's all velvet. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to look into that one. If any of you collectors ever seen one like that, I don't think what, I have. What's that, the, the Ernst Rome Brigade? I don't know what that is. Uh, well, maybe it's one of those Bund ones or something, you know? Yeah, it's possible. It's possible, yeah. That's, but, uh, uh, it's not nothing that I know about. No, I've, yeah. I've never seen that, uh, that but before. If he, if he says it came home from Germany in the 101st... Well, you know, that's what he says, we'll see. So that's uh, kind of interesting. And, uh, and then if he says a vehicle, I guess he's talking about an ID flag. Yeah, there's two oh, flags yeah. in there. There's a bunch Couple, of flags. Yeah, yeah here's a uh, yeah, here's the uh, vehicle ID flag. Is it a Swaz or it's a Balkan Swaz, Cross? It's a Swaz, not yeah. a Balkan Cross. Yeah. It's a Swaz. And these are always one-sided with the grommets and uh, mm -hmm. it looks in nice condition. So that looks pretty good and oh, we got three flags here. Now uh, this is an NS State DAP version. Got some nice hooks still on it with a with a hoist string and so forth. <laughs> there you go, guys. When have you ever seen that? <laughs> Never. It looks like a um, inventory. Yeah, stitch tag. right on there too, isn't it? Yeah, it's something. sewn sewn right to the flag. Hmm. So that's kind of interesting. And, What's uh, that mean, Alan? Looks like it's metal. It's metal. metal. Is it metal? Yeah, yeah it's it metal. Like it's metal. Yeah, it's yeah. metal. NSDAP Chrysler Tung Bulkin inventory number 198. How about that, guys? I've never seen that before. A tagged flag. A tagged that flag with a metal tag. Mm -hmm. That is a new one on me. I like it, though. You like that, huh? That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. Come yeah. On. And this just looks like a big. A big NSDP DAP job with a it's got a big um, tunnel hoist on it, and you guys can get the idea what that is. But okay, that's some cool stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, neat stuff. Uh, that armband. Uh, who knows? Maybe it's something. Nice. Yeah, we'll look into it. And if anybody uh, has ever seen one like that, we'd like to hear from you. We're always trying to learn around this hobby you can you can be in it for years and years and still see something you've never seen a la that yeah i've never seen that before that tag no no so on there i'm going to give up on that baby yeah please do yeah. Uh, mm. Man. let me try the other half here see if it's oh, any geez. better <laughs> yeah i'm sure it's going to be better maybe can't you get a new one different mm -hmm. pack How's your drink, Ob? Mine's getting a little scanty. Yeah, it's, it's getting full too of ice. It's all watered down. Mm. Yeah, we gotta gotta refresh a little bit, guys. Getting... Uh, oh, I forgot to get our picture from uh, Chiaffi's. I'll have to do that next time. Oh yeah, that's a restaurant we we just love up in. Uh, Union, New Jersey. Wonderful place. Oh. It's uh 
It's full of gangsters and policemen all at the same time. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> they look at each other. Take it easy. Take it easy, yeah. No, I'm, I'm sure that's not the case, but uh, but that's that's the area where Tony Soprano operated, you know, and so you never know. Uh, but boy, do they treat us there like kings. Eddie, the bartender. How long's he been there? Thirty-five years or something? Something like that. I always ask him every time we go in. Eddie, you buy the place yet? Nah, still working here. Said, oh boy, you know. Wonderful uh, Italian food. Uh, when we went in there the other night, we just said, Eddie, don't even give us a menu. Just bring us stuff that you like. And boy, did he take care of us. It was wonderful. Uh, we were there with uh, with uh, uh, Barry Smith. I don't know whether some of you collectors know Barry Smith, a very nice man. And uh, Cheryl. Michelle. Well, Michelle, I'm sorry. Yeah. I always say Cheryl. Uh, Michelle, his um, partner, and uh, boy, we really ate up a storm in that place. Mm-hmm. No, you're right, Ob. This half's no better than the other half. I can't believe it. Mm. Boy, that was a good dinner. I'm still remembering it. It was delicious. Mm. Uh, let's see what we got here. This is a box coming from... Uh, Austria. Austria, wow. Yeah. <coughs> so let's see what's coming from Austria these days. That should be a good one. Yeah, I hope so, we'll see. At least it made it. Doesn't look like anybody opened it up either. That's always good. Mm-hmm. Ah, this half of the Denovoli doesn't seem that bad. Mm. Well, let's see what we got here, guys. Got the Bob Burns cutter working here. Well, it looks like a dagger bag in here. Oh, you like the bag? Oh, yeah, I like the bag, yeah. Mm. I don't know, every time I see one of them, I'm always worried it's going to be a return. Well, you never know. Yeah, you never it know. happens, yeah. you know. Well, let's see what we got. Oh, hello. Hello, collectors. Oh. I think I'm seeing something I like here. Ah, here we go, guys. <laughs> Don't you love them? Oh, beautiful. That's a really nice one, too. Uh, chain, chained SS, uh, the Type 1 chain, and uh, see that DRGM through the clover leaf there, and uh, the is nice that, skulls. Is that exclusive to uh, Type 1s? The DRGM and the no, uh, it's not. You don't see it all the time. Don't see it all. The time. Ninety percent of the time you do, but not all the time. But you wouldn't see it on what you call Type Two. No. Or Type no. Three. So. No, because the Type Two is closed up right. at the top. This clover leaf is open at the top on the Type One, right. and the clip they used to secure it had, uh, the, had DRG, the DRGM yeah. on it, and that's why it shows through. I think we through. talked about this before. We probably yeah. did, but yeah. uh, you know, Let me guys see the skulls forget. On the chain. Yeah, there's a, there's a, those type one, those great skulls. Yeah, it looks crisp too. Really yes. wear on them. Yeah, it's a nice, uh, very very nice. Yeah, it's nice. And uh, the scabbard has um, beautiful um, original paint. It's got some um, little bit of attic crazing in it. No lemon peel in there. No lemon peel. <laughs> orange peel. Orange peel. Yeah, orange peel. Nice. Yeah. I still don't know what I'm talking about. No. <laughs> and uh, let's see what the, uh, got a, a one district marked on here, so we're probably going to see an early dagger in here. So let's see what we got. Oh, it's got a decent blade. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Good motto. Good motto, yeah. And let's see who would have made this one. Ah, there we go. It's a Gottlieb Hemisphere. 
Chained SS with a maker mark. Yep. So what we have here, collectors, and I've hold on a minute. I think I've told you this many times, but it's always good to people may not have seen earlier videos or they don't remember, but uh, the 36 chained SS obviously came out in 1936 and uh, uh, when it was offered, a lot of um, early SS people already had an SS dagger and times were tough at that point. And they said, well, gee, why do I need to buy the dagger with it when I already have a dagger? Uh, so that's what a lot of people did. They used their original uh, dagger with the chained SS. And I always wonder... What happened to all those scabbards, early scabbards yeah. that... Uh, you think it'd be a set. Yeah. You know, that would yeah. really, it'd be great to have both scabbards. There must have been a hell of a lot of uh, early scabbards around in 1936 that nobody like, I'm knew I'm not wearing that beat scabbard. I got to change SS now, you know. <laughs> but anyhow, th this is a completely original, um, nice, um, nice chained SS. Just like we see in those... Uh, early times with people that uh, wanted to use their original dagger because they either couldn't afford it or they didn't see the sense of buying the uh, the dagger with it. Hold it up again for me, Pop. Yeah, yeah. it's a beauty. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Really uh, nice. Not mint, but it's, uh, it's <laughs> nice, though. And for you guys that love these Type 1s, this is a really a good chain. Uh, I don't think I showed you the reverse of it. Um, well, yeah, let's see the mark. Yeah, yeah, it's got the... Uh, the Coulter Zeichen stamping there. So there it is. It's usually really deep on those uh, Type 1 chains. Cool. Yeah. So that's a, that's a good piece. Uh, it's um, uh, You can never have uh, enough chained SS's. They, they kind of fly out of here, so I'm always... Uh, Always thrilled, to, always thrilled to get one, and especially a nice original one like that is no, no tampering with it. It really looks, uh, really looks good. So that's good, huh, Ob? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's okay. And uh, got one more box here. Let's see what this is and. And I guess then we'll look at the rest of those helmets if we have time. This is coming from a man in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Let's see what we got here. Come on, Bob Burns, what happened here? Did we get it? Yeah, we got it. You know, I was thinking too, I remember last week I said we ought to add one more prize to the drawing. And I'm thinking what we're going to do, we're going to give a $100 gift certificate with a Bob Burns cutter. <laughs> and uh, I'll see if I can get Bob to sign that cutter. And we'll make, we'll put it in a little frame or something. Uh, that should be cool. Gee, I wouldn't even mind having one of them myself. It sounds, it sounds all right. I want to do more than one. <laughs> so we'll add that to the prize list, guys. Yeah, we got a lot of entries. We got to, uh, yeah. yeah, we got to make this a fun thing. Yep. Well, we'll talk about that when I'm all done with all this stuff here. But let's see what we got here. Uh, some kind of, a lot of documents. Something else, uh, maybe that's just padding and something else here. Well, let's see what all this is, guys. Let's see what we're going to be favored with here today. Yeah, Bob Burns cutter with a $100 gift certificate. That sounds pretty good to me. I wouldn't mind winning that. You don't think that's going to fly, Ob? Uh, no, I don't see anybody complaining about it. I think you should do more than one. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, How about yeah. $10, $100? Like, yeah, tell yeah. them, Ob. 
like that guy that, oh, I thought you were going to give a Himmler dagger yeah. away or something. Yeah. You know? Come on, guys. We got a couple of high leaders upstairs. Do you want to give one yeah, of them away? Give one of them away on a prize. Yeah. <laughs> Good idea. Ob. Now we got six million entries. Yeah. Don't tell me stuff like that. Remember, you're going to inherit this business. I don't want to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what else is here. Just like you, I'm trying to make everybody happy. That's all. Yeah. Oh, well, what like do you got in there? It's like a navy. Oh, it's a well, well wrapped uh, naval dagger. But all right, there we go. Oh, come on, Bob. Bob falling on the floor here, probably because Whitman's drinking too much. Mm. All right, you want to put a bet on whether this is still lit or not? Yeah. <laughs> what do you want to bet, a buck? I got 20 bucks. Let's see. Well, it's lit now. You can't. <laughs> you owe me 20 dollars. Hey. <laughs> Well, we got a dagger and a scabbard backwards. Of course. Stand. And uh, kind of interesting wear on the hanger. See how it's worn there? Yeah. And then it's worn right here. And cover the button. Yeah. It's a fat hanger. Original, though. Oh, yeah. Well, let's see what's a, inside here. Yeah, portipi, I mean. Uh, portipi, yeah. Oh, there's something here that I've never seen before. Oh, yeah, this is... Yeah, uh, look at that. Wow. <coughs> I've never seen this before, and it looks absolutely original. Oh, it's not covering the button. Let me see that knot again before we get to oh. the blade. Let me just see that one more time. Okay, I thought you had it the other way around. She said it was backwards. Okay. This uh, dagger is equipped with a very special blade here. First, here's the um, the U-boat war memorial in Kiel. Oh yeah. You don't see too many of them. No. Um, a lot of times, when you do, they're not original. But this, this looks um, absolutely original. And on the other side is just a, an incredible um, uh, dedication, a one of a kind, too. I've never seen it before. Gross Admiral Dernitz. And he's listed as U boat commandeer or something there. Trying to see them both at the same time here. Just give me a minute. Can you get that? It's it's real little. But that 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 is uh, that is original. Wow, I've never I've never seen that before, and it's not all full of gold and blue and all that stuff. That's that, that's why it's original. Well, that's probably why it has that dossier. Yeah, that's probably what it's all about. Yeah, that's, really, that's a killer. How is it listed? Yeah. Gross Admiral Dönitz, U-Boat Commandant. So this was given uh, when um, Dönitz was in charge of the U-Boats before he was in charge of the Navy. So that's very, very, very interesting. And uh, wow. What an incredible, um, what an incredible piece. I wonder it doesn't say who it was given to, but I guess I'll have to look through the, through the documents and all that. Uh, um, maybe there's, I think this is all just a history of doing it, but I'll, I'll look through it, but, um, I've seen a lot of these kind of things with Donitz's Raider's name on them, and 95% of them are fake. Uh, but this one uh, looks absolutely original to me. Uh, that is really, really a rare uh, naval dagger. Can I show the blade again, just in case I didn't miss, I missed something? The blade is really interesting. The front of the blade is really interesting. The Memorial. 
Yeah. yeah. But see how the etch is? It's all different, and it's beautifully um, backgrounded. And none of that gilt or blue or any of that stuff. Just, you know, a basic... Uh, that anchor something, too. Yeah, it is. It, it Everything jumps, doesn't it? It really has the, uh, the look of a... I don't know if I've seen that before with the... Uh, the eagle within the anchor with the swastika. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Now you're right. You're right. It has the eagle in the anchor. That's another special thing about it. Uh, again, I've seen that on many copies, but not like this. This just this just really talks to you. Hmm. Doesn't that look fine, Ob? Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. And it was worn a while, too. Uh, this was this was probably given out fairly early on. Dönitz was uh, the U-boat commander, oh, in 39, I guess, when Prien blew up the British um, battleship. Dernitz was head of the U-boat. Uh, uh, like this the, looks uh, like something that comes from that period. I like the subtle scabber too. It's not one of those big... Uh, oh no, it's yeah, great. It's and it's got these great big eyelets too that are on um, uh, a lot of uh, Horster and uh, Otter Maker scabbards. Um, so you don't remember ever seeing this piece before? I've never seen it before. Hmm. Uh, I'm quite thrilled with it. I want to read what the uh, the sure. sender has to say about it, but uh, yeah, that's a great piece. It's a very very interesting piece, and um, the wear of the portipi is uh, is interesting too. You can just you can pick up where it's worn on the on the uh, the end of the cross guard, but this is, you know, if the dagger were hanging like this. That's where you're your hand is all the time and uh, yeah that's a well this is um I think uh, I think something special uh, I'm quite I'm quite taken with it you like it Ob? I think you yeah. do don't you yeah it's uh, I'll probably see it upstairs in about a week <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll tell you it's a candidate uh, is, this, is, uh, is this the same box here same box, yeah, something else here. It's a set of hangers. I don't know. The Bob cut, Burns cutter will tell us soon. Well, you gotta get another one. That one's. Uh... Oh, mm -hmm. no, it's a. Uh, no straps. Well, this is a later SA. Shows a little age in the guards, but not bad. And the uh, scabbard paint is really nice. Early nickel eagle. Well, let's just see what this is. Oh, beautiful blade. Oh, yeah, that's mint. Ooh. Absolutely mint. Look at that green and the blue ones always have the best green. Oh. Uh, that's that's a really a beautiful blade. It's an M42, just a it's a WKC, uh, but that blade is uh, really really great. Well, the Denobly went out again, Rob. Yeah, we know the twenty bucks. So what am I? I'm off to forty yeah, now. The forty. I better do a double or nothing here before I get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's nice. Good light dagger. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah, no, nothing wrong with that. Well, should have took that out first. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what's coming. I know, in. I know. So, but sometimes you got good instinct. What is this pill doing here, I wonder? It's not a pill, it's a snap button, you knucklehead. Oh. <laughs> it's a Viagra. <laughs> I'm past that, Steve. I don't, I don't, I don't. 
well past all of that. Thank goodness. Well, that that's uh, that naval dagger. I think is uh, is a very important, um, very important piece. Um, I've seen a lot of a lot of naval daggers, and with all these jazzy blades and yeah, all kinds something. of crap and uh, gold and blue all over the place and uh, I just you know Boy, I, uh, sure, I sure hope I got that for the uh, for the collectors that are watching because that's uh, uh, that I, I believe that that to be uh, uh, absolutely an original uh, original piece and that navy anchor with the uh, eagle and swaz and I, I can't recall ever seeing that before there's something here in this uh, well, here we have a cuff title. I don't know cuff titles, but uh, oh, nice cuff title, it's, yeah. it's got a good look to it. It's an NCO. Yeah. does have a good look, though. I like the backing, too. Look at that. Yeah, it's got, the, yeah, it's got the perfect wear. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good um, NCO. For you guys that know cuff titles, you can write in and tell us about that. I'll have it vetted anyhow, but it looks good to me. Well, that was uh, wow, that was an interesting, interesting box there. That that donut stagger. Hmm. You just don't see original things like that, and you know that some of them had to be. I mean, they're just. And you it's, kind of think something like that must have been given to one of the U-boat well, captains. You it's know an I mean? advanced piece. We really have to look into it, and uh, you know. Well, there's no way to nail it down of who it was given to, when it was given, except for the vintage of the. I mean, you can see the dagger was absolutely worn. Well, we can look into the consigner's uh, paperwork and see what he's got to say too. That's yeah, very interesting, though. All right, collectors, I know we're kind of running long here, but um, I don't know, some of you guys say you like the long ones, so here we go. Uh, I think I need a refresher here. Mine's My drink is kind of watered down. How's yours, Ob? Yeah, why not? Pour up, yeah. yeah. Toughen it up. I'm glad you got a coaster now. How much? How much did the Imperial did you buy? Just just two bottles? Three bottles. Three bottles. Three <laughs> three half gallon bottles. That should last us a couple of weeks, for God's sake. How much can you drink? Wow. Wow. I'll tell you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's that. A little little spot of this on top, and and. Uh, we still got we got a a number of um, of helmets from that same nice lady in Verona, New Jersey, and uh, some of them we don't know even what they are. But uh, again, it was uh, uh, she wanted to clear out everything, so so we cleared it out for better or worse. We'll hope it's better, but we'll see here. So I'll start with it. Well, this is not too exciting, Ob. Uh, uh, what do you think this is? Another Italian yeah, fire a, helmet I or believe, something? Yeah, it's a, this Italian. Looks like the same one we showed earlier without the insignia yeah. and without the camo. Yeah, okay. Well, there but it is. But if anybody's interested, you know. Uh, well, this looks better. Here you go, guys. We have oh, a, nice. uh, a nice, um, really nice um, police uh, helmet, the lightweight type with the air vents and uh, the decals are, are really good on both sides. Good police decal there and uh, the national insignia there and uh, as you'll see the chin strap is still on it. That's always nice and the liners in good condition. So I don't think that's a bad helmet. Nice condition. You like that one, Ob? Sure. Yeah. Well, let's see what else we got here. Um, 
Okay, it looks like a, an M42 uh, Luftwaffe. Uh, the finish shows a little bit of uh, age and so forth, but it's all the finish is all original. Uh, pretty good decal though, not bad at all. That's a 90 percenter, mm -hmm. I think, 85, 90 percenter. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, and uh, the chin strap, the the liner. Um, you want to know the size again, Ob? Or it looks like another 64 to me. What's the bet? You can double or nothing. Well, you just make something up, so you uh, win. <laughs> you just got nothing. It's a 65. Oh boy, we're even again. Right. I knew I'd get even <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, I'll yeah. check that later to make sure. <laughs> no, it is. All right, all Think right. I'd lie to you <laughs> over money? No, I never do that. <laughs> okay, Ob, it is a 64. Mm. See no, that? It's not. Oh. No, it's not. <laughs> no. It's not. It's a 65. It's an E60. Okay, it really it. is. All right. All right. I don't owe you a cent. <laughs> Sorry. You get enough anyhow. Yeah, I got enough free booze. Yeah. While I'm on the clock, that's all I, that's all I can uh, ask. For. Need more than free booze in this business. Yeah, but I'm on the clock. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, but the clock keeps running though. Good. Even on Sundays, like we're doing today. Now again, I don't e I don't have a clue what this is. It's you Italian. Know what this is of? It's gotta be Italian. Yeah. Italian. Yeah, but I don't know it. We uh, got a good liner and a chin strap, but uh, you know, but these could be. Uh, there's so many different helmets out there. I'm just yeah. gonna assume. It's, I don't. I don't know. It's Italian. If I'm wrong, please don't yeah. rip me apart. No, nobody's gonna rip you apart. And what do we got here? Another, Another Italian. Yeah. It's Another like, Italian. I believe so. Got a good finish on it, and uh, again, all the the uh, the straps are there, the liners there. But these guys will be like, "Oh, that's uh, that's check, that's chap." You know. You just... Oh, they might. Yeah. Uh, they might, and that's good. We want to know. Sure. Because yeah. we we don't profess to be experts in helmets. <laughs> I mean, it's tough enough with the third Reich stuff. I mean, you know. uh, <laughs> what is this with the bomb blast on the? Yeah, front? I saw. I, uh, French? I don't know. Oh, I'm gonna say Italian again. No liner, just a shell. That's gotta be worth a whole 50 bucks. We got six people calling. I'll take that for 50 bucks. Yeah. I don't know what it's worth, but oh, here we go. Another, um, another real nice uh, yeah. police helmet. Great uh, decal there. Great finish. It seems like this man had a certain type of helmet he liked to buy. I don't know. Uh, or the ones he found, they're all the boy, same. Boy, look at the yeah. decal on that one yeah, too. Wow. Nice. No, this is, uh, the finish is incredible on this helmet. And chin straps, and the liner, everything. And, yeah, and the uh, the uh, things for the neck shield. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's a nice, uh, nice, uh, nice helmet. Nothing wrong with that. Very nice helmet. That's about at the top you're going to see condition wise. It's really good. Anything else here? Uh, well, let's see. Ah, another Luftschutz. But this one is uh, uh, seen some bombing action or something. All right, get into this air raid and stop throwing stuff at me. That's what happened yeah, to this people. Nice big dent. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot of dents. It's cool though. That's. Yeah, it is what it is. Still got the strap. 55, that's not the head size. That must be the uh, liner size, isn't it? 55's too small, I think. I don't know. I, it might be an issue number. Speed limit? I don't know. <laughs> Speed limit, yeah. All right. Uh, there we go there. A lot of helmets, Pop. Yeah. Um, yeah, but what are they really, you know? Uh, here we got another one here. I guess that's Italian also, is it not? It is today. Well, if there's some Italian collectors out there, we got some uh, some good Italian helmets. Do you, do you know here. Russian helmets at all? I mean, uh, I never Italian seen Russian I mean. helmets, yeah. no. So that's that. And uh, I guess there's just one more in here. Boy, look how tiny that one is. Almost looks like a kid's helmet. Yeah, that's... It's a... Uh, 
Oh, it's a double. Du double, double luft. It's a double decal M35, guys. Yeah, that's a good piece there. Yeah, not uh, not a lot of uh, decal on it, but it's still there. The uh, the finish shows wear and so forth. And you got some uh, age wear to the uh, national insignia. Um, but hey, look at that liner. No chin strap on that one, but the liner's no. still all there. Now, uh, what size is this going to be, Ob? 60. Well, you're very close. 58. No, 62. Damn. <laughs> but it's a small helmet. Yeah. But it's all there, and it's an M35. And, yeah, it's uh, a good helmet. Hey, what the heck? So, I think that's all that's in here. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I just wanted to uh, make a mention here of uh, you guys, whether you oh, don't want to drop them. Um, International Military Collector. Um, this is a, a wonderful, wonderful publication that comes out, I think, quarterly. And it's not just pictures and blah, blah, blah. It goes into lots of detail about badges, daggers, helmets, all kinds of things. Um, it's um, published by my friend Dietrich Mertz, uh, B, B and D. And um, I really recommend um, uh, that you guys make a subscription to this magazine. You can look them up on the internet for, for doing that. But... Um, uh, it's really a, a tremendous magazine that uh, uh, deserves, uh, got some, some great ads and great, I mean, just wonderful, wonderful pictures inside, wonderful uh, uh, things about different stuff. And there you go, pristine versus tarnished Iron Cross first class. There you go. Probably people would want to know stuff like that. I mean, it just, um, it's a great, a great magazine. And, uh, whoops, I just saw, I think I just saw some Earth, yeah, there we go, some Earth Rome daggers there. I mean, there's just a, an awful lot of, there you go, more full rooms. I mean, it just, this magazine has stuff in it that nobody else has. I know you all want to see it on the internet, but it's kind of fun to lay in bed and, uh, and look at something like this. Or in a nice cozy chair and... Wow, they, look at that Christmas dagger there, that eagle, and uh, and it's an SS version. Wow, talk about being rare. Mm. But the, the, it's a great magazine. Uh, B&D, Dietrich Mertz. What, no centerfold? Huh? No centerfold? <laughs> yeah, there is a centerfold. What's in the centerfold? Oh, it's an ad for uh, Andreas <laughs> Thies. Okay, well, that's all right, too. Andreas is a good guy. So that's, um, I think that's worthwhile. I'm not trying to hustle anything here. I just, uh, I'm just telling you from my heart um, when I think there's worthwhile things and, you know, that's all. What else was I supposed to mention, Ob? Well, we'll show the prizes again, the top three. It's, well, the top We're going to take those entries for uh, till. 99 I guess and then that's it because we're being overwhelmed with them. Well for we'll take <clears throat> entries for another couple of weeks, but that's it. Um, okay These are the first three prizes uh, Then we also have um, books uh, the uh, the German SS book uh, We have an Atwood book in the original uh, paper cover uh, What else was there Rob? and the gift certificate? Oh, yeah, and lastly, I mentioned earlier, a gift certificate for $100, including a Bob Burns signed cutter. Which I want to increase. That's the one I want to win. I think we should have five or, f five or six more of them, but okay, until next time, you know. But anyhow, um, Ob and I are heading out um, this week for um, uh, the show that we all call the Cornfield Show, uh, out in uh, Ohio, Wilmington, Ohio, 50 miles south of Columbus, 50 miles north of Cincinnati, and there's absolutely nothing there but cornfields. And that's kind of what's nice about it, too. Uh, there's a few good restaurants and so forth, but it's a, 
It's a great show. It's a relaxing type of show. There's no hectic stuff going on. Uh, you can talk. Uh, this is, all the dealers are usually there, most of the prominent dealers, and uh, it's definitely uh, worthwhile um, to come out and do that. I know it's out in the middle of nowhere, uh, but maybe that's the good part about it. So here we go. Um, as I said before, we're, we're going to keep taking entries for the prize contest for a couple more weeks. And then uh, the last week we'll, we'll cut it off and uh, we'll have the big drawing on the 100th episode. Wow. Imagine that, Ob, a hundred times we've, uh, we've done this. Feels so. like a thousand. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. But uh, as I always say, thank you so much, collectors, for, uh, for watching this. And uh, uh, I'm sort of getting tired of uh, every place I go. Oh, I saw, I watch your videos. You know, I was sitting on my porch last week smoking a cigar and a car coming the other way stopped on the other side of the street and he's rolling down his window and I thought he was going to ask me for directions someplace. He says, no, I watch your videos. <laughs> it's, just, it's just crazy, but thank you so much for it and I'm glad that everybody likes it and uh, uh, Stay with us. We're still having fun and we're going to keep doing this for a long time as long as you guys uh, uh, keep tuning in and enjoying it. So have a good one. Take care.